This is Karen with DealClevelandRadio.net, and it's time for Avoid the Maze, your journey through life. And my guest today is somebody that practically lives down the street for me, you could say. She's in uh, Northeast Ohio, where I'm located. And uh, when I was asked to do the interview, my first comment was, you know, country music really isn't my thing. And Jacqueline, I'm going to tell you why it's not. When I was growing up, my father liked country music of the 50s, which was very twangy. And the people who were playing back then, they just, they weren't in my demographic. Let's just put it that way. And I understood what my father liked it. Um, but it wasn't until probably maybe about 10 years ago that my husband, who loves country, said to me, you need to start listening. And so I try not to think about what the genre is, because if I think about the genre, <laughs> I see my father sitting there trying his ukulele out to play along. You have some musical PTSD <laughs> from country. I'm sorry. That's okay. Hopefully we can cure this. <laughs> I, I, I think we can. Okay, um, me too. Especially because I just heard your newest song. But before we get there, let's take a step back because, like I said, we're living right outside of Cleveland, Ohio, which is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. Um, and you're not a rock and hall, rock and roll you know, performer. We're not too far from Motown and that's not your genre, but you went with country. So tell us how you picked that up and how long you've been doing all this. Well, thank you so much for having me on, first of all, and thank you for giving country a shot <laughs> in your heart. <laughs> um, So I think I'm lucky to live in a time where so many of the genres are crossing. I mean, there's so many pop stars now doing country and I have done rock. In fact, I started as an opera singer. So like, like Pat Benatar also started as an opera singer. I started doing classical training. And um, when I moved to Los Angeles, I met um, a gentleman named Ty Stone. And he was from Detroit, also not doing Motown, but yeah. doing a kind of country, Americana music. And I met him in L.A. and was his backup singer. And he ended up getting signed to Kid Rock's label, and who's also from Detroit, and touring with him, doing country music. But the genre was very, you know, a rock country. And so that's what I'd like to think of myself as more, you know, Americana a mix between the rock and roll of Cleveland and the country roots of America. Yeah. So that's kind of how it happened. But through singing Back Up for Ty was the big reason I got into songwriting in a country style. Well, and as I was listening to your newest release, I wasn't hearing the country that I grew up hearing, you know, with my father. And um, I think one of his, well, I know he used to love Jimmy Dean. Um, which was like, why? Um, I think now if I went back and listened, maybe I would appreciate it a little bit more. But it's also their favorite was Minnie Pearl. And I always thought oh. it was because she was comical, not because of her music. So <laughs> th that's what I grew up listening to. And then when Coot and Nanny came on, and that's probably way before you, that's the type of country we were listening to. But you are right. Today, there is much more of a crossover and yeah. so um if i don't even think about the genre it's like i was listening to some some rap the other day but the person did it so the melody was you could hear it in her voice as she was doing it i was appreciating it okay and it wasn't all the swear words in the world coming out of her mouth yeah. so i think that you know getting a little bit of taste of everything is very very helpful yes so and i think that country music is very lyrically driven yeah. and so if you want to tell a story it's a it's a beautiful genre to tell that story in so where did you study opera um 
Indiana University is where I, um, I began studying in Lorraine, Ohio, actually. I had a teacher in Rocky River, and um, I would drive from Lorraine to Rocky River uh, and have voice lessons with her uh, every week, and then went to Interlochen in Michigan, which was like a summer camp, right. and got a scholarship to Indiana and studied. Um, you know, Indiana is an amazing school that in the middle of these, you know, really cornfields, right. they have an amazing music school. And it's a uh, opera, classical voice is one of the main concentrations there. And all of these opera singers that were at the Met and La Scala all over the world come and retire there to teach. And so you're walking the halls with some of the greatest opera stars of our time. And my teacher, one of them was a Martina Arroyo, who uh, had a fabulous career in Europe and the United States. And, um, you know, I studied with Costanza Cucuro and there was Giorgio Tuzzi, who um, was the guy who sang Some Enchanted Evening on the recording from Broadway. So, you know, and, and he was in his 80s when he was teaching. So you were there with these amazing teachers with wisdom and they were teaching you not just to sing, but the story of, of how they got into opera. So it was it was an amazing education. Absolutely. So what then took you from opera to country? Was that you thought <laughs> that you had maybe a bigger audience in country? You know, I was I lived through 9-11 and I was in New York City for that. My roommate um was working in the trade center, uh, but she's she's okay. There's a story behind that, but she was fine. But being in New York City during that time, there was a lot of emotions and I, I, you know, singing someone else's music doesn't always, you know, doesn't give you the expression. And I was having all of these feelings and um, I had taken guitar lessons as a teenager. So I picked up my guitar and I started to write and it felt, it felt better than just singing someone else's emotions from a hundred years ago. Right. And so I wrote my first song and it was called Mary and um, I started it started to feel right to, to compose. So when people think about musicians, at least when I was growing up, you turn on the radio and the radio would play the top 40 for their floor. And whether it was on a country station or whatever, there were certain people that you listened to. And we didn't realize there were so many other people out in the world performing yeah. writing music writing for other people as much as themselves yeah. yeah and one of the things that i've learned is how many people live in northeast ohio who perform on a regular basis you know most people would, might not know who they are but they are very successful in what they're doing so yeah. have, have you come into that community as well you know, wherever I've lived, because I've, I've lived many places, and I just came back home to Ohio in the end of 2019. But wherever I've gone, there are there is a community of musicians everywhere. And I think that the, the generation we're in now, you don't have to have a label behind you. It's nice. But, you know, people are in charge of their own listening experience um, because of the internet and because of the freedom with music today. So, um, yes, and I've always, you know, music has, no matter where I've gone, even in, you know, in Europe, in the Netherlands, um, beautiful music communities everywhere you go. And I've always had, um, you know, a circle of friends. I've always had a home because wherever I've gone, I've connected to musicians. So I've never been lonely. Thank you to music. And, and one of the things I've noticed that the musician community is unlike most others um and i've been, and i've been very lucky since i've been podcasting with many especially from ohio all the way up to northeast um uh new york that they're all willing to help each other out and we don't see that a lot in other areas of our life um i know my son um he doesn't play music, although he's now trying to teach himself how to play guitar, at least how to accompany himself. But he's been writing lyrics for quite a long time. 
And he is so giving, you know, it's like, here, I have these lyrics. What do you think of them? Oh, you really like them? You know, I think the sound is going to be like this. And next thing I know, some other musician someplace else is now playing this. And he just feels good because when he hears it, he knows he accomplished that. You know, yeah. And he's not in the music business, so to speak. So it's not like, hey, you know, I'm losing out on that. It's like, I'm really gaining. Yeah. And now I can send people to go listen to him perform. Well, life is just better when you're collaborating rather than competing. And I think that after, you know, of course, there's always going to be people that are competing with everything. But the people that have been in the industry for a while, they are very much collaborators. And and that's the beautiful thing about uh, being in the music industry. You meet a lot of them. And I think because there's so much independence out there, it's different than when everybody was on a label and you were being controlled by that label. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a good thing in some ways. And for some people, you know, maybe they would have preferred to be on a label and have everybody else take care of everything else. I really love the freedom that comes with being, um, you know, independent. So. Absolutely. But you have something new coming out. So tell us about this. So Hometown is out now, and um, there's a, it's a single, but it has a B-side, uh, Burn For You, and it just came out this week, and I'm so excited. It's being very well received, um, and it definitely comes from my heart, so I'm happy that it's reaching other people's hearts as well. So what drew you to writing that? Because when I listened to it, um, and I wasn't sure what, when I was listening to it, I don't think it was out yet. Um, but I kept thinking, this is something that I know my son is really going to appreciate. He's mm -hmm. going to, he probably will figure out the story behind it. But why don't you <laughs> tell us the story behind it? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, as as we all know, life is a roller coaster. So for every beautiful time, there's often a balance of a difficult time. And I had come from a difficult time. Um, my marriage fell apart. I went through a very difficult divorce. Um, I have a daughter. So uh, leaving my marriage, um, starting again, was a scary time. Uh, I was living in Europe. And my daughter and I moved back um, to my hometown to be uh, near family. And, you know, you wonder like, am I, am I going backwards? Am I leaving everything that I've pursued? But what, what ended up happening is I found all of the things I was journeying um, and searching for back where I started. Um, I started a music school here in my hometown, um, I have a beautiful circle of friends. My daughter is very happy. So um, you appreciate things sometimes more after you've been away. And especially being away from America, you know, I, I thought, oh, I'm going to live in Europe and I'm going to discover all these things. But I really, you know, I didn't know how much I had missed home. And, and home is, is uh, you know, it means more to me now than it ever did. And you probably needed that experience to appreciate home. Yes, most definitely. I don't think I would be who I am today, loving where I'm from without being away from it. You know, and Lorraine has got so, so much gold in it. It's the international city. We have a lot of diversity. Um, we have, you know, just the international festival where people bring their flavors and cultures and food together. It's a, it's a great place. And we have the lake, which, yep. you know, I took for granted. We have a beautiful lighthouse and this amazing body of water that, um, you know, it's just beaches <laughs> and I, I didn't even realize I came from a beach town growing up I just thought it was this you know oh you know Lake Erie is not the greatest but it, it was it, it's beautiful today and I appreciate all of these things wholeheartedly now well and I'm hoping our listeners are hearing this because that's part of the maze that we get stuck in okay we think that we need to be someplace else and we strive for it and sometimes we get there maybe that is the place that we're really supposed to be I won't you know put a doubt on that but a lot of times we believe it's always going to be better somewhere else 
But once we get there and we start putting it all together, like you did, you knew that you needed to come home, you know, and I've seen that with my youngest son. He, um, year, almost two years ago, he um, he's in the sports field and he took a job that took him a thousand miles away from home. And his first reaction was, I was going to be the one that was going to be the lonesome one and miss him. And I do, but I still have everything else around me that I'm really happy with. And he loves his job. He wouldn't leave it in a second, but he keeps talking about, it would be so nice if I could come home. But he now is trying to create home where he is. And we're trying to help the best we can. And sometimes that's what we have to do because as he said, he knows if he came home, he wouldn't have the wonderful career that he has right now. It would be miserable. You know, and I said, and after a day or two with your mom and dad, you'd want to leave. <laughs> well, you know, I, I am in my hometown, but I'm not in my parents' house. <laughs> that makes a big difference. <laughs> I, yeah, when I first came home with my daughter, until I had a home, like a house, we were in my parents' actual house. And that was not, you know, the best. <laughs> because after being away and having freedom from your parents, you know, you don't want to be in the house for months together. So exactly. we live a couple blocks away and it's beautiful. It's perfect. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. and you found your music community back here too, yes. which is well, what well, you COVID brought a lot of people home. Yeah. So a lot of my friends that I knew growing up that were in uh, theater and music, they went to LA and New York and Nashville and Austin and all these places, but they had to come home, a lot of them for COVID, but a lot are taking care of their aging parents. Right. And so I have a lot of very successful directors and artists that are back home because they want to take care of their family member. And so we do have an amazing community here. It's people that um, are bringing what they learned away back, not just me. So it is, it's a lucky time. To be. Well, and the interesting part is we're living in a time now that for what you do, for what I do, we could live anywhere. Okay. Yes. yes. You need to you need to feel centered there. And I know uh, I was visiting my son in June and he kept saying, you know, it would be really nice if you and dad moved down here. And I said, you know, I could do it because of what I do. Yes. My husband's in IT. He has a full-time job, okay? He's happy with his job. If he moved, he'd have to start all over again. And I said, wouldn't work. Yes. I said, but I can do what I'm doing and I'm content. And, and yes, I've noticed with many musicians, they'll say, yeah, yeah, I do go out on the road, but I could go out on the road from anywhere. Yes. Matthew McConaughey, A-list celebrities yeah. are moving home. Yes. And they can go to their location and film and then come back and be in a good place to raise their families. Absolutely. And so it, the world has changed. It really has. There's more choices. Yeah. So you're producing your own music or are you working in a collaborative? How, how did your song get put together? Um, well, it was written in back home in my backyard in my garden with uh, Derek Connell and um, in a very beautiful, peaceful, you know, comfortable at home. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, but we went to Nashville to record it. So I went to Nashville. I worked with Austin Moorhead, who's amazing. He's married um, to a, a wonderful woman who did the background vocals. Um, so Parker McKay is her name and she's been on The Voice. So we went to Nashville, we recorded and um, it's a, it's great because I only had to fly out for a few days because a lot of the background music he would do and send to me and then I would give my changes. And so we worked, you know, remotely until right. I went out to record the vocals and the track was already complete by that time. So it, yeah, it's, it was a 
really a wonderful experience. He's, he's an amazing fella. Um, he went to Yale, uh, which has a great, it's the best Ivy League music school. And then he played pit orchestras, guitar and pits on Broadway, wow. met his wife, and then they're in Nashville um, recording and performing. So yeah, so he was a joy to work with, very talented. And so is his wife. And I was honored that she was doing the backup on the song. And you know, you put out something very interesting. It's not like back in, and I'm going to go before the 60s, at least. If you had backup singers, you were all in the studio at the same time. Yeah. And you sat and waited while the backup <laughs> singers did their stuff. They <laughs> sat around and waited for you to do your stuff. And depending on the producer, maybe you all had to work as a whole. And it was very time consuming and you were away from home quite a bit. A lot of time it's rushed because you're paying by the hour. And so you just have to get what you can within a time frame. And there's a schedule this way. Austin could work on it as much as he needed to. And I could send my notes and there wasn't the, you know, this um, time constraint. And that, you know, and people are busy today, so they don't have to, you know, his, the back of the singer didn't have to wait around right. <laughs> for hours and hours and hours, you know, so it was, it's, um, it, it worked for this, this, um, this single, and that was a really positive experience. And when we went there, the person that picked us up to go to the studio from the Lyft driver was from my hometown. Oh, I was Small thinking world. about about my hometown and she picked me up and uh, we we were sharing stories and calling our friends, mutual friends. And yeah, it was meant to be. It definitely sounds that way. Now, do you think your daughter's gonna follow into the music industry? She loves music, you know, she's 10. And you know, oh, I have okay. no, you know, whatever she wants to do that makes her happy. But she's right now uh, in a play, she's practicing to be in the Adams Family musical. She's got a beautiful voice. She loves to sing. Um, and I'm whether she goes into a, you know a career of music, she'll always have the love and the joy of music, and that makes me very happy and proud. Well, that's what we were happy about with our son because when he went away to college, uh, he had a scholarship to University of Akron, mm -hmm. and his first semester he um i don't remember what classes he took but he just didn't want to take them he wanted to perform he wanted to sing he wanted to write and they said no you need to know theory and he goes his, <laughs> his actual words were screw theory i know what i want and um i i'm not even sure he went to class to be honest uh <laughs> I think that's when most he, freshmen uh, yeah. have trouble going to class. Um, and I remember he called my brother and he said to my brother, who's in the industry, why do I have to learn theory? And he said, you know, I wish I had gone to school to learn all that. He said, I learned it on my own. And he said, and I've been very lucky. He said, but that little extra bit of knowledge Important. would be so helpful. And he said, you know what? I love music, but I don't want to feel like I'm doing things that I don't want to do. So he switched and he said, I'm going to follow my sports dream. And I will, if somebody asks me to come perform, I'll come perform. If I want to write, I'm going to write. And yeah. he now has really the best of all worlds. He's hoping that after his uh, sporting season ends, that he will have picked up enough on that guitar that he can go find a local bar and sing and enjoy himself on the weekend. What does he do for sports? He works for a WNBA team, not Indiana. He's not with Caitlin Clark, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> um, but he's down in Dallas with the Dallas Wings, and oh, he wonderful. just he just loves it. I mean, it's sports is his real is really his thing. And if you ever get him talking, um, you'll just say, where did you learn it all? And are you sure it's right? And then you go Google it. It's like, oh, my God, he's right. Yeah, but well, this, this is more about you than him. So 
Hey, and you know, theory is no joke. <laughs> like <laughs> mathematical. And um, I took all the theory and the ear training and, and for a singer who didn't, you know, play violin or, um, you know, a lot of people come in with a lot of theory freshman year of college. And I was really pretty much beginning. And it was one of the hardest feats of my life. It's not a simple thing, but it helps me every day. Yeah, so. I'm sure it does. And I think, I think he sort of knew at that point, I want this to be my fun thing to do. I want it. Just, not yeah. Always fun. Yeah, no. exactly. So do you have anything else planned? I know this just came out, but I know the wheels are probably turning in your head for the next song. Yeah, you know, uh, we have two songs that are this release, you know, single with the B-side, and it would be great to write an album. Um, my daughter, I would love to do a song with her and put it on on the record. So yes, there's more songs that are being worked on. But right now, um, I just want to get hometown out. I think that it's something that a lot of people can relate to. Everyone has a hometown. And um, I think the older you get, the more you, you know, revere it. So, you know, I live in Lorraine. Toni Morrison is also from Lorraine. Yep. And um, I think she said something like, everyone has a place where they're from, but only the lucky ones have a hometown. And so I I thought about that. And I was like, you know, I was, I was very fortunate. Lorraine for me was a hometown. And um, so, yeah, I think that people will think about that and think about where they were from and, but yeah, I had a I had a hometown too. You know, and it's funny you should say that because I grew up um, in Detroit, in the actual city, but close to the suburbs. Um, and I only lived there till I was fourteen. But when people ask me where I'm from, I say Detroit. And yet, I've lived in Cleveland for over forty years. So. But then you still think of that as your hometown. That is still considered my hometown. And this weekend I'm going home to my elementary school reunion. So your elementary school yeah. is having a reunion? Well, yeah. that's cool. This is our third one. We had one oh. um boy. I think we had one around 1990. So that would have been like 30 years. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, we're all folks, but it, it, we're just so excited by doing it. I just can't believe that 90 was 30 years ago already. <laughs> I'm flying, but um, I think it's great that you have a hometown and that the elementary school is still getting together. Yeah, it, and you know, a hometown isn't always where you were born. Right. You know, sometimes you move somewhere and very quickly that becomes your hometown. Exactly. Um, a lot of people in in my city, Lorraine, moved here and they consider it their hometown. So it's really it doesn't always have to be where you were born. Well, and my brother who lives in Saratoga Springs, New York, that's his hometown. He oh, doesn't, wow. you know, when I bring up Detroit, he looks at me and goes, You haven't <laughs> lived there since when? But it's those are the the strong memories that I have. Not that the others aren't any good, but those are my core. And so mm -hmm. I will go back to my reunion. I'm going to share your song at my reunion. I cannot wait. Um, mm -hmm. And when you come up with the next one or you put your daughter on an album with you, let us know and we'll have you both on, okay? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Are you going to be performing anywhere close? You know, I was just um, asked to sing at Rockin' on the River, which is um, a big Lorraine event every week. Um, yeah. And I believe that's going to be the 30th of August. So it's the Tim McGraw uh, cover band event. And I think they're going to have me sing it there. So, yeah, so planning that. And um, really, you know, today it's really important to to have listeners on Spotify. So we're creating playlists there, working with radio stations, um, and then TikTok and Instagram reels. That's a big way for music to get out today. And I've been having athletes and, um, you know, different people with platforms on Instagram and TikTok using hometown to highlight their own hometowns or their own events. So that's been really, really fun. It is wonderful. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that 
Anne connected us and uh, I'm going to follow you. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Have you a wonderful time. day. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye.